Like most kids, Eric Hagelman and his three-year-old sister, Anna, loved Halloween. On the afternoon of October 31st, 1991, Eric and his sister were playing in the backyard of their home in Atlanta, Georgia, before changing into their costumes to go trick-or-treating. I didn't think that there was such a danger in my backyard. I always thought of the backyard as being a really safe place. Maybe she'd fall because they had loose branches. Anna, come down! Anna, come down! So I climbed up after to tell her to stop. Their mother, Lee Hagelman, was just inside the house. I was looking through my mail when I heard Anna crying. <laughs> I looked outside. Eric was in a clearing about halfway up the tree. I looked up and Anna was at the top of the tree. It was the scariest moment of my life. I could hear my baby crying up there, and I didn't know how she was holding on. I didn't know how long she could hold on. I just kept saying, hold on, hold on. I'll get you down. You'll be okay. I told my son to carefully come down. I wanted him to go out and watch for the fire truck. Oh, she must have come up our driveway. Did you see him? It was so high up there, and she's so tiny. Other people might have been able to be more calm than me, but seven years ago, I lost my only brother from a fall that would not have even been that high. And he fell and died instantly. And I just knew, I just knew if she fell, that she wouldn't make it. And I just knew I couldn't survive it. When police officer Fred Mills arrived, seven-year-old Eric was there to meet him. I said, well, do you know if anybody at this house called 911? And he said, yeah, I think my mom did. Anna. Yeah, see if you can get an ETA from the fire department. The first thing I thought was, my God, look at that little girl way at the top of that tree. You know, and again, the tree was shaking. About, uh, about 40, 45 feet up in the air. You're just like Joan. You're just I like I thought of a story. It's one of her favorite stories, okay. and it's about a cat named Joan. One of the things that Joan does is climb up into a tree, and she you're gets stuck. Like so I said, Anna, you're like Joan. You're up in the tree, and a fireman is going to come and rescue you. Within four minutes, Atlanta firefighters got to the scene, led by Lieutenant Dennis Hamm. I almost didn't believe it was a three-year-old because I didn't see how a three-year-old child could actually climb a tree. But seeing that silhouette of a child up there, your adrenaline starts to flow. Bob McCoy and his partner discussed their options with the lieutenant. We couldn't reach her with our aerial truck. It was too far away from the road. There were wires hanging over the driveway. We couldn't back it in there. And we also could not use ground ladders. We'd just been too unstable. We really had no other choice. What we had to do was send somebody up. And that's when Firefighter McCoy just said, well, I'll go on up and get her. I decided because I was the shortest. Everybody else was over six foot, 200 pounds. You know, I'm just a short fella. Don't weigh a whole lot. The branches are so close together that it's thick you can't see above where you're going. It's just a matter of just keep going until you find her. The higher I got, the thinner they got. But I kind of grasping each time, you know, holding on a little tighter the further up I went. 
Now I'm just waiting for this to pop, and we're both gonna go to the ground. And when I got to the top, she's just hanging on to the tree. I told her that, you know, we're gonna get her down. She said, well, I'm stuck. I looked up there, and her shoes stuck between the two branches, and her foot's dangling out with the shoestrings tied around her leg. Just hold on. So I reached up there and tried to untie them, of course. It was in a knot, so I knew I needed scissors or a knife. You need a knife to cut the lace. The police officer said that uh, he had a pocket knife, but we figured that the tree probably couldn't hold my weight and his weight and the child's weight. So that's when the boy came in. I'll take it. The other fireman said, you know, that probably really would be the best thing. Got it coming up. Because he's so little and he's climbed up there before. Careful, Eric. I put in my pocket. And then I started climbing up as fast as I could. That didn't take me but a couple of seconds. He really didn't get that much farther than my reach and the, and the length of his box. Firefighter McCoy came down far enough that we pretty much formed a line. Firefighter McCoy came down far enough that we pretty much formed a line. After I cut the shoelace, and turned around and told me, she said, I can get down now. But I can't let her go down this tree by herself. Her mom will shoot me when I get down there. <laughs> come on, easy, dude. I said, you come down to where I'm at, put your arms around you my neck, and we'll go down this tree together. And so we did. Every rustle of every leaf sent, you know, chills through me. And I remember seeing them and the clearing finally, I didn't relax until they put her in my arms. And then I just, I just broke down at that point. People don't understand how quickly these men will risk their lives. He is a hero in my book. He saved her life because I don't know how long she could have hung on. I don't look at myself as a hero. Had it been my child in the tree, I would have wanted somebody to go up there. I'm just glad that Anna's safe. The fireman said, you know, ma'am, we usually only get cats down from that high. And I said, well, you know, she has been planning to be a black cat for Halloween. Don't you guys look so cute? They were fine. They were so excited, and I was just so happy to have her back. You know, I just had my little angel back. Joan wants to climb a tree. Look, you can't ever tell somebody that you love them too much. You just have to do it all the time, and you have to show it. Because in a flash, in one tiny moment, your whole entire life can be changed forever. 